Well, hello, this is Adam and welcome to Rare Classic Cars when finally the weather seems to be cooperating. So today we're going to celebrate spring by taking the 59 Pontiac Parisienne for a drive. And for those who don't know, I'll explain a little bit more, but this is a Canadian Pontiac sold only in Canada and other export markets uh, around the world, but not in the US. So it essentially has some very unique features that are quite different from the US Pontiac, but it has mostly the same visual appeal. Let's talk a little bit more about it and take it for a drive. Well, hey, this is Adam. Welcome to Rare Classic Cars here on what I guess I would call kind of the first day of spring. <laughs> it's uh, pretty nice outside and thought I'd get my 59 Pontiac out and take it for a ride. For those who haven't seen this before, it is a 59 Pontiac Parisienne, meaning that it's the top of the line Pontiac for Canada, but it is effectively a US Catalina with the Bonneville trim. So the Catalina is a short wheelbase, shorter body, riding atop a Chevrolet Impala chassis, which is why these wheels are so far inboard. Yes, that is stock. That is how it came from the factory. This car was built in Canada, in Oshawa, Ontario specifically. And these are so rare today. They really were unloved back in the day, especially in the States, because as you can imagine, people looked down upon them. They were kind of half Pontiacs, Pontiac in name only. This has a Chevrolet medium duty truck engine, a 261 cubic inch version of the 235 that was found in the US and it has a power glide transmission. But now what was once disregarded is now cool again. And I especially love the Vista four door hardtop with this cool wraparound glass front and rear. Notice this car has no side view mirrors on either side of it whether on the passenger or the driver's side, which takes a little getting used to. You can see there. So people ask me, well, why don't my cars have a passenger side view mirror, outside rear view mirror? Well, they didn't come with one often, and you couldn't even get one. This car doesn't even have one on the driver's side. And you'd think that that would be a problem for driving, but once you get used to it, it's really not because you have a completely unencumbered view out the side of the car. This car has 17,000 original miles on it. It is a hard top, so we can, I'll put the windows down so you can just take a look at it and see what it looks like. But take a look at the interior first. Note it does have the Chevrolet gas pedal and brake pedal and steering column with the Power Glide shift quadrant. But other than that, has the Pontiac dash, does have unique uh, seats, door panels. These are the original seats. They were under plastic when I got the car. And it's amazing, this car is compared to the 70s era GM cars. When you close the doors on this car, you can kind of almost close it just, boy, they sound great. You don't, doesn't really take any effort to close it, just. I don't know what happened to this door closures engineer later for GM, must have retired. So here you go, here's with the windows up. And there's with the windows down. Completely unencumbered, unobstructed view, especially with no B pillar there in the middle. Makes for great open air driving. Notice in addition to not being as far outboard as the wide track Pontiacs in the US, this is also not quite centered in the wheel that well. But that is how they made them. I'll show you under hood. As I said, it has a 261 cubic inch version of the 235. 
the old stove bolt six cylinder here and in a Pontiac decal to convince you that this really is a Pontiac engine, not something else. It's not overly powerful, but it does have quite a bit of torque. This car gets off the line smartly. Its top speed is red line limited to probably 75 or so. But it's a great engine for driving around town. So here, let's start it up. Can you hear it running? Just see the fan turning. So quiet. Makes it an absolutely pleasant car to drive. Just a single exhaust here. And pretty pedestrian wheel covers. But very nice place to be. You sit really low in these cars. It's like a legs out position almost, but it's comfortable. There's the driver's door panel. All right, let's take it for a ride. All right, let's get ready to go. Boy, the six cylinder is smooth. off. See you on the road. Well here we are on the freeway in the 59 Parisian. It's got a little road noise but it's really not that bad. I will say though it's a bit scary driving the car on the freeway as it's really red line limited to probably 75 miles an hour so I don't push it much past 60. I think the rear end in this is pretty short likely a 373 or something like that. Still very level ride, very level ride in this car. I would say amazingly level. This car is so old it doesn't even have the flash to pass turn signal. Heading to Woodward Avenue. Although it has the ride for the freeway, the car is much happier around city streets. Just like this. No issues accelerating away from a stoplight. Or keeping up with traffic in spite of this being a 261 six-cylinder powered in car. The engine though is velvety smooth, very, very quiet. Do you have the power of the V8? No. Do you miss it? No. Even if you had a 283 in this car, it wouldn't be all that fast. Although the 283 is also a nice engine. I have a friend who has a 59 Impala with one, and he loves it. That would be an interesting comparison, the Impala versus this Parisienne, given basically the same vehicle underneath. This is again is a Canadian Pontiac, top of the line Canadian Pontiac, which means that it is a Pontiac body. This presents is effectively a U.S. Catalina body with the Bonneville side trim and ornamentation, riding atop a Chevrolet Impala chassis. So the non-wide track Pontiac with the U.S. medium-duty 
truck engine, the 261 version of the Chevrolet 235 six cylinder. It even has a Chevrolet steering column here with the power glide shift indicator because it has a power glide. And really, in spite of being a Frankenstein car, if you will, it works amazingly well. This car doesn't have power steering, it does have power brakes. And it's amazing how touchy the old brake systems are from this time period. You barely have to touch the pedal and you'll slow down. A lot of people will change out the drums or say the drums are not great brakes or all these things. They're just fine. I, I think they're absolutely fine. The one modification which I have not done to this car, which I may do at some point, is put a dual chamber master cylinder on for safety. These have a single chamber. Although I always make sure when I have that setup <clears throat> that my emergency brake truly works because it is, in that case, an emergency brake. You otherwise have no brakes on the car. And this emergency brake works well and is well adjusted. So side tip, make sure, especially if you have a single chamber master cylinder, your emergency brake is properly working because you do not want to be in a scenario where you have no brakes and you can't do anything aside from crash into something, you can kind of downshift into lower gears. But after that, you're really on your own, and that is scary. I've had that happen once, not in one of these cars, actually in, when I was a college student, in a dual-chambered car, and I had lost the rear brakes, and I just didn't have the money or the time to fix it at the moment. I was driving for a few extra days, and I thought, well, I'll be fine for a couple extra days, I'll just drive gently, and then I popped the other brake line, because of course, it's under more stress than normal, and I had no brakes. Thankfully, I was not going very fast, and nothing happened, but it could have been a totally different story. In any case, this is a great speed for this car, kind of 50 miles an hour. Beautiful dash, all original interior in this car, and it does have 17,000 original miles. That is the original fabric with more panels. I have kind of this cool vinyl headliner. And an interesting no day night mirror, just a tinted mirror. It's kind of tilt tinted slightly blue. It actually works well. You don't miss the day night function, to be honest. Hope you enjoyed the ride along. Thanks for watching. This car just rides so smoothly on city streets. amazing Chevrolet during this time period had what they called the quadrupoise ride and they advertised it as having a more level ride than the Fords and also not having the nosedive that the other competitive cars did and I have to say this car being a Prezient has the quadrupoise ride I actually believe it very very level ride without any nosedive as you come to a stop it's pretty impressive for the era just a great driving car. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief drive. Until next time, thanks again for watching. Take care and happy spring for those in the Midwest and the northern part of the U.S. Well, thanks again for watching this video highlighting the 1959 Pontiac Parisienne with a brief drive and engine startup. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve this up to more people like you. Also, if you're not yet subscribed, be sure to click the circular icon of the 67 Riviera at the top left and check out the two video thumbnails at the bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Until next time, thanks again and take care.